Hello everyone, this is Srini Venkat. Today I'm going to uh, demonstrate on how we can export a SOLIDWORKS project or a model to Revit. Uh, before that, I will give a quick introduction about uh, our company. So today's agenda, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to introduce about uh, Strensoft. And then uh, followed by that, I will explain the use, the need to convert a SOLIDWORKS model to Revit, and also uh, the reason to export to Revit software. Followed by that, I will give a quick introduction on the features of the converted product, and also a few success stories. And then followed by that, uh, we'll have a demo for 15 minutes. Once the demo is over, uh, we can have a question and answer session where uh, you can ask questions to us. Strensoft is an engineering and IT services company headquartered in Dublin, Ohio, USA, uh, with the development and design center in Chennai, India. We have offices uh, around the globe uh, in Dubai, in Australia, and in Europe. Our major lines of business is engineering services. In engineering services, we do design as well as automation, and also we have a separate product arm called BIMDEX, where we publish all of our software product development, specifically focusing on engineering. We are partners with Key, all key engineering software companies uh, like Dassault Systems, PTC, Autodesk, SketchUp, Rhino, and also we are development partners with Microsoft and Altava and Red Hat. As you can see here, we have various lines of business, uh, engineering being the key lines of business, and we also do PLM solutions focusing more on Innovia, Vinchil, uh, any of the PDM on PLM for engineering. We also do IT services where we focus on web-based software development, and uh, we do mobile development, and also we do quality, so we uh, check as a separate services. Uh, these are some of our key clients for our product. Google is our customer uh, who also used the SOLIDWORKS to Revit converter. So we have various other customers who either use uh, SOLIDWORKS to Revit or Rio to Revit. In engineering services, uh, we do CAD automation uh, as a service uh, in any of the engineering softwares like SOLIDWORKS, Creo, AutoCAD, Revit, and any of the other engineering softwares. We do BIM services, basically it's building information management where we help customers uh, to produce BIM models uh, for their architectural purposes. And also we do uh, CAD data migration from AutoCAD to any of the softwares, and also we do PLM solutions. We have great expertise in doing restaurant design, and also we do mechanical product design like equipment design. Coming to uh, the topic of discussion today, uh, we have various suite of uh, converter products which helps customers to transfer data from one uh, branch of engineering, like from mechanical to architectural, or from uh, AEC uh, and other mechanical softwares or VFX softwares like Maya and concept design softwares like SketchUp and Rhino. Uh, so we help customers to transfer the data across these softwares. As you can see in this picture, uh, BXF is a file format which we have designed uh, to cater the needs of the data exchange. The BXF file format is a proprietary file format of Strensoft, uh, which we use to translate the data between any of the softwares you, you see on the screen. Currently, we have SOLIDWORKS to Revit, and Creo to Revit, Creo to IOT exporter, 
inventor to IFC. These are the product which are in the market right now. And followed by that, in a couple of months, we will be launching other suite of products, uh, specifically Revit to SolidWorks, where the customers can get the Revit model and import inside SolidWorks or Creo. And also the customers can import a Rhino model or a SketchUp file or a Maya file or a file from Unity into SolidWorks. In terms of the industries, uh, these are some of the industries we serve specifically focusing on the data exchange, uh, pump systems, lighting, uh, anything uh, which relates uh, or manufactures components for the architectural or the building industry. Why we should uh, uh, get uh, files from SolidWorks to Revit? Uh, Revit, uh, I'm not sure if uh, everyone knows uh, the software called Revit. Uh, Revit is an architectural and MAP and structural design software uh, produced by Autodesk. That's uh, industry standard software used by most of the architects. So there is a need where uh, many of the customers who produce components which need, which will fit inside a building, like uh, any of the HVAC, uh, the plumbing, the sanitary, uh, furnitures, and all these component manufacturers, they have a need to get the design done, in, the detailed design done in SolidWorks uh, to be represented inside Revit as a bill of quantity. In Revit, there are two different types of uh, projects you can create one is uh, called a Revit project which is the entire building the project in, in, in Revit project means it's the entire building if we talk about the entire building it's all the components inside a building the architecture structure HVAC piping electrical fire alarm systems anything which goes inside a building is the entire project and families or the components which make the project. Whatever which can be manufactured, uh, it, it is a family. For example, if uh, there is a pump manufacturer, uh, they need to produce a Revit family and give it to their customer so that they can use this family inside the project which they design in Revit. Some of the customers, they design the entire system inside SolidWorks. We have, for example, uh, one of our key customers, Google, uh, they design the structure of their data centers in SolidWorks, the entire structure, not just one component. So they have a need to get that entire structure done in SolidWorks to Revit. So there the use case is to convert it as a project directly from Revit, from SolidWorks, I'm sorry. Coming to the key features of the product, uh, as I mentioned uh, during the initial uh, presentation, BXF is the file format which helps us to get the data from SolidWorks to Revit. So it's two separate plugins. One fits inside SolidWorks, the other one inside Revit. The SolidWorks plugin generates the BXF file, and the BXF file uh, can be imported inside Revit using a plugin which sits inside Revit. In SolidWorks, uh, we have options to uh, simplify the model because we know the model created in SolidWorks will be having a lot of manufacturing details uh, and, and also assembly level details like fasteners, which are really not required in Revit because it's just a representation in Revit. So we understand this requirement and we have options to simplify the model before it can be exported to Revit. And also, it helps the customers to protect their intellectual property where they can remove all the confidential engineering information from the SolidWorks model. And the export supports export of the geometry as well as the metadata we call parameters or properties, and also the color information. So 
the reason is in Revit, it's more of an information. That's why they call BIM. It's called Building Information Management. So the information about a product is very important. So there is a need to export the data along with the model. And also there is an option to reorient the model before exporting. Uh, the reason being the way it is oriented in SOLIDWORKS might be uh, for, a, for a manufacturing purpose, but in Revit, the orientation is uh, important. For example, if there is a light fixture, it has to be upside down. So if the model is created in a horizontal orientation in SOLIDWORKS, uh, the tool can help the customers to reorient before it can be exported to a PXF file. In Revit, as I mentioned, the major import option is either we can create a Revit family or we can create a Revit project. It, this depends on the customer's requirement. If the need is to just transfer a product, one single product to Revit, then they will choose Revit family. Or if they design an entire structure or a, a HVAC system in SOLIDWORKS, or, or a portion of the architectural building, they can use the project option to import it as a project. And also, we have an option to change the hierarchy. When I talk about hierarchy, I'm talking like the sub-assemblies and the sub-assemblies inside, the nested uh, sub-assembly structure in SOLIDWORKS. The same hierarchy might not be required in Revit, so we have an option to collapse the hierarchy when we import inside Revit. And also, we have other options uh, impo uh, based on the import type requirement. And uh, we can also set a category in Revit. Uh, in Revit, everything is driven by what kind of uh, component it is. Either it's a wall, it's a door, or it's a window, or it's a pipe. So the category is very important inside Revit. So there's an option to define what category of component we are trying to import inside Revit. So with this, I will get into the demonstration of the product. We have a sample project for the demonstration purpose. So this is a small building which is designed inside SOLIDWORKS. So this has a couple of components here and also some sub-assemblies, as you can see here. Let me export this model to Revit with, uh, I will walk walk you through the options when I export. The product sits inside SOLIDWORKS as a plugin, as you can see here. It's called BIMDEX. BIMDEX is a product form of Strensoft. And we have an option to export the SOLIDWORKS model to a BXF file. Let me select the export option. Once I select the export option, it will show a wizard-based user interface, uh, which will help the customers to choose the required options to do the export. The first option being selection of the configuration from SOLIDWORKS. The SOLIDWORKS model might have some configurations, pre-built configuration. As you can see here, we have three different configurations. One is the default, which is the entire assembly. The second one being the without four clips, where these two four clips are hidden in this configuration, and also there's a without silencer where all these silencers are hidden. So these are some of the uh, configurations I have. Let me choose the without forklift option. 
and also as you can see here there's an option to reorient the model uh, when you have coordinate systems created in the assembly level that's going to show up here and uh, we can use this option to, to choose what orientation we want to export to Revit. Let me choose the default one here. Um, moving to the next UI. Here, there are further more options to simplify the model. This is uh, similar to the defeaturing option available in SOLIDWORKS, whether we can ignore the parse as per its volume or based on the quantity we can ignore. And also, we can ignore some of the manufacturing features. And also, there is an option to uh, ignore the components based on its view. This is similar uh, to the ignore internal option, where, but this is a little more, bit more detailed, where we can say what components we want to select per view. For example, if I choose based on a front view, it is just going to select the components which are visible in the front view. Let me go to the next screen here. As you can see here, we have this detailed user interface, which it, it has all the components and sub-assemblies uh, inside this entire project. It is. It will be listed here. This will help the customers to check and uncheck whatever the components they don't want to export to Revit. Here, let me take an example. I will say, let me type engine. So there is a part which has the description engine. I am going to uncheck this. I am going to select a component called silencer. I'm going to ignore this. And I'm going to ignore a component called fan. There's an exhaust fan here. I'm going to ignore. So once I uncheck all these components, I can go on see a preview here. So the preview option will help the customers to make sure they are exporting the right information to the VXF file. So here, uh, it shows all the components which are unselected here. And I see that there is one component which I have missed. So during the preview, there's an option to exclude or even include a component. So let me exclude this component and say OK. So I have excluded all the informations which I don't want to get export to a VXL file. Once this is done, I can select the next UI. So this is going to present with an option to save the file or the options whichever I have selected to a VXL file. Let me save this file to a VXL file. We can choose the path wherever we want to see this PSP file. Depending upon the size of the model and the level of information uh, which is selected by the user, it's going to take a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes to do the export.
see the BXF file generation is completed. Let me finish this. So once we complete the export of BXF file, we can, if the Revit software is available in the same computer, we can just import this BXF file or if Revit is installed in another computer or you want to give the information to your vendor, you can send this BXF file where they can use the plugin to import the file. Let me open up Revit here. As you can see here, there are two different types of informations you can create in Revit, like how we have parts and assemblies uh, inside SolidWorks. Here we have an option to either create a Revit family or a project. Since the model contain like kind of a building information, let me choose the project as the input option. So we can choose the required template for creating the new project. Or this can be imported even in an existing Revit project. Inside Revit, there will be a separate toolbar here. Again, it's called BIMDEX. That's the product arm of Sensor. Uh, it will have an option to import the BXF file. Once I select the import option, that's going to present the user interface where I can select the BXF file. This is where I have generated the BXF file. And <coughs> Here we can see a couple of import options. There is an option called flat subassembly, flat assembly, and complete assembly. So flat subassembly, what it does is any first level subassemblies inside the main assembly, it's going to create a part out of the subassembly. For example, here in this case, in the generator model, I have a door assembly. If we choose the default option, it's going to create a, a project with the door assembly and also these two parts separately. But if we choose a, a flat subassembly, it's going to create one single family with all the geometry of how much ever the hierarchical level we have, all the geometries will be flattened and this door subassembly will be created as a single family. Likewise, we have other options like flat assembly. The flat assembly option will move all the parts from any of the hierarchical sub-assemblies to the main assembly. It will just remove all the sub-assemblies, so it'll, the project will just have the parts. The complete assembly is the default option where it will maintain the same hierarchy as we have in the SOLIDWORKS, native SOLIDWORKS model. If you have five levels of sub-assembly, it's going to create that many levels of nested families in the project. Let me choose this option and I'm going to open. So as I have chosen the complete assembly, it's going to create the entire hierarchy of the project, but the BXF file will have the information which have the skip by the user in SOLIDWORKS. It's not going to be there in the BXF file. So all the other required information will get created inside the project. The tool will create each and each part and each subassembly as a separate Revit family. It's going to combine them together and import uh, insert inside the project.
the tool can handle any complexity of an assembly from SOLIDWORKS. It can cre create any big of an assembly from SOLIDWORKS to Revit. There's no size limitation or a performance. So many of our customers, for example, Walt Disney, they use our product. They design the theme parks. Uh, it's a theme park division of Walt Disney. Uh, they design the buildings in Revit on all the rights and mechanical equipments inside the theme park they design in SOLIDWORKS. So there is a need, there's a big need for them to uh, convert the SOLIDWORKS file to Revit. So now you can see that the uh, SOLIDWORKS model is successfully imported here. Uh, here, this is the door assembly. Uh, if I go to the, this is a sub assembly, as you saw in the SolidWorks model. When I get into that, so the door lower is a family, and the door frame is a separate family. I can still go and edit this family. For example, uh, let me go and edit this over. I'm changing the size here. It's an editable model. Let me see it over. It changes to the subassembly. As you can see here, here it's uh, a native Revit family, which can be edited. So it's a complete editable model. If the project has any parameters, going to list here. Let me check if any of the files has any information. So it just there's there was only one parameter custom property inside SolidWorks which got created here. Let me close this and uh, I will create the same BXF file in a different import format, and I'll, I'll assign the category to show that we can we can assign categories inside the imported model. Let me create another project. Let me go to the tool again. I will import it. Let me choose the same BXL file, but this time around I will choose a flat subassembly option. Once I choose a flat subassembly, it's going to produce the user interface where I can assign the category. Here I will go to the door assembly and I'll say this is a door category. The rest of the components I'm just leaving to the default.
all the save information will be available in the same uh, path where the BXO file was. And this import option will also help the customers uh, to reduce the file size because if it is a complete assembly, the file size is going to be a little bit heavy. If we choose an option where we collapse the sub assemblies, that's going to really reduce the file size. So this has successfully imported uh, the information. Visually, we cannot see any difference here. But here you can see that it is a door category, not a generic model. So it has been assigned a door category. And also, as I chose the flat subassembly option, it's going to collapse. And we will not have any parts inside that. You can see that I can directly edit it because it has completely collapsed all the parts. Any of the sub-assemblies and how much of a hierarchy we have, it's going to collapse. The sub-assembly is going to be just one single family with all the geometry information. You can directly edit any of them. Any metadata associated with these parts are going to be uh, not there. Only the sub-assembly will have the metadata, the other properties. I have demonstrated how we can import uh, the SOLIDWORKS model in Revit as a project. Let me choose another sample model where I will export this as a family inside Revit. As you can see here, uh, this is a heat exchanger uh, with a lot of models inside this. You can see that there are a lot of components inside this model. Uh, it contains internal components. Let me export this model to a BXF file. Let me go to the next screen. I am choosing the default options here. Here, as you can see here, there are a lot of fasteners which are in larger quantity. I am going to ignore them based on the quantity. So it's going to give the user an option to select a range where you can say that I need the components which are less than a specific amount of instances and larger than a specific amount of instances. It's going to remove those components. And also, in this case, I'm going to ignore all the internal components here. I'm choosing all the six views and it's still export anything visible in these six views. You can see here it has automatically ignored all the internal components and also the fasteners information. Let us see a preview of this.
you can see that all the fasteners have been ignored here because uh, we chose to ignore all the components which are large in quantity. Let me say this file to a BFF file. Let me save this as a BXF file. So it has created the BXF file. Let me go to Revit. This time I will create a family because this is a product which will get inside a building. I will choose a new family and it's going to ask us on what category of an equipment it is. Let me choose the mechanical equipment because the category is a mechanical equipment. I'm going to import this using the same import option. In family mode, there is an additional import option called flat part, which is going to completely ignore all the part level information, just get the geometry and create the geometries here. In this case, uh, it's going to create the main assembly as one single family with just the geometry. Let me choose a flat sub-assembly again here. Since we have assigned the category when we created the family, and it, uh, it is not asking for any information pertaining to assigning the categories. has imported here in the family. As you can see here, all the internal components have been ignored and also the fasteners which we ignored based on the quantity rule has been ignored. So with this, the demonstration is completed. I will share the success stories from other customers. Google is one of our other customers who use this solution. They 
use SOLIDWORKS to design their data centers. Uh, the portion of any mechanical uh, portion of the data centers, like the structure of the building, the mechanical portion, the HVAC piping, all these they design in SOLIDWORKS. The architectural portion of it they design in Dravit. So there, there was a huge need for them to get their entire project, which they design in SOLIDWORKS to Dravit. So they are one of our premium customers, and this tool has helped them to a greater extent to reduce their design cycle time. As well, current, their current process is really tedious, where they lose a lot of information when they exchange from SOLIDWORKS to Dravit. So these are two customers who are in an enterprise level support with us. And there are a lot more customers who bought the solution. This is a, a unique product uh, which is not a standard interoperable solution where it gets either uh, any of the existing files like STL or STEP or SAT. It gets a native Revit file which is more useful for the architects to do further editing or add materials to the bill of quantities. And it has a very good geometry, which is lightweight, and it produces a lightweight model. So I've done the product demo. So with this, I'm completing my demonstration of the product. Thank you so much for everyone for attending this webinar. So we can have a Q&A session right now, and we can ask any questions related to the product. Thank you.